John, you grew up in Colorado, Wyoming, Plano, a lot of big open sky. Were you the kid who laid on your back in the grass and looked up at the sky and thought, wow, I'd like to go out there one day? Yeah, I'd lay in a cardboard box, actually, and dream I was going to the moon back in the 1960s and dream we were Apollo astronauts. But you were a lot more advanced than I was then. Uh, you became a U.S. naval aviator and an engineer and actually became an astronaut. That's a very elite group, but there's something else that was uh, an elite group and you called on your heritage for that. Tell us what that is. I'm a citizen of the Chickasaw Nation of Oklahoma. And when I came to NASA, I was informed I was the first enrolled member of a fairly recognized tribe uh, to be in the astronaut corps. And uh, I didn't realize I'd be in that position, but I found myself in a role that uh, I think all kids have never had a role model in before. And so I've taken it very serious and taken it to heart. And I, I travel the country and really the world talking to indigenous communities about uh, living your dream. You actually carried uh, the flag on a trip to the ISS? Yeah, my Chickasaw Nation flag. I flew that for the tribe. Also flew a flag for the Crow Nation uh, that actually gave back to them when I rode a bicycle across the country back in 2008. So uh, yeah, it's uh, coming full circle. Ariel, I'm gonna try to pronounce this. Unicoli, Alaska? Yeah, that was really close. It's Unicoli. If you're local, you say Unicoli. So you're, you're pretty local, you got it. All right. So when you're born there, you already yeah. have a sense of adventure and are outdoorsy. What was your childhood like? Oh, uh, it was great. I, I love growing up in Unicleet and it was everything involved, like just being outdoors. My home is being outside and in nature. And I think if I didn't grow up in Unicleet, then I think my life would have been a lot different. Yeah, you get to cover a lot of ground because you are a plane pilot. Uh, you were on the show, Flying Wild Alaska. What were you hoping for people to get from that? Well, Flying Wild is just, just me and my parents just living our lives in Alaska. For that one, um, I really wanted to inspire younger people, especially girls, to get out there and get in the air because we don't have a lot of female pilots. But that one for me was just a fun project. I helped create it when I was in college with a friend and it was sort of an excuse to not be in school and go and get uh, my pilot's license and hang out with my parents because I just, I love my parents so much and it was just fun. Yeah, I, I, that's a good teacher's note and excuse for not being in school. <laughs> Into America's Wild. Um, this is such a great project. And, and John, you know, it's funny, we have so many people who are lamenting the fact that they might not be able to travel abroad to actually go on vacation because of COVID. But really, I think a lot of us underestimate what we have right here in this country and it is so diverse. Tell us about the premise of this movie. Well, you had a really good chance to see the world from a different perspective and then to be above it and to be actually to go on it, to walk across the land and to, to travel in the IMAX movie. We've seen places that I've never, I've only seen them from distance. I've never seen them up close and personal. We went everywhere from Brookings, Oregon to Hood River. I think Ariel swallowed half the Columbia River, which learned to surf or a wakeboard. We went to Watkins Glen up in uh, the upstate New York. We went to Finger Lakes. We've been to little places in New Mexico, uh, one place called a Shishlapa. Uh, these hoodoos, these tall sandstone spires that uh, out in the middle of nowhere and just really remarkable, beautiful settings and meet some really neat people along the way. Yeah, and of course it's, it's narrated by Morgan Freeman. Anything narrated by Morgan Freeman, he can just do the ABCs and I'm like mesmerized. Oh, he says <laughs> my name, it's great, yay. Yeah. yeah, he says our name, I wanna get it as my little phone saver. Join astronaut John Harrington and Alaska native Ariel Trito. I love that, John, Ariel. John Harrington, Ariel Ariel, what was one of your favorite moments? I got to kiteboard and I was not good, but by the end of the day, I was standing up and it was so fun. And I just love that area. It's so beautiful. And there's so much to do, like active wise, you can go mountain biking, running, hiking, kiteboarding, all the, all the stuff. So I really loved Hood River. And then um, upstate New York was really cool. It was really beautiful. Um, there's just so many amazing places that I had no idea existed all over Utah. California, Arizona's awesome. So um, everywhere was just so different and diverse and just so it blew my mind every time we went to a new spot. Yeah, and, and John, one of those places that's familiar to us is the Riverwalk in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's kind of nice looking at it through fresh eyes if someone's never been there before as well. what did you find interesting about that? Well, I went to Churchill High School once when I was living in San Antonio and I spent time down the Riverwalk before, but to be able to go down there with the crew uh, to meet, um, you know, folks in San Antonio. Churchill, my rival high school, I went to John Marshall. Oh, no kidding. 
Yeah, I didn't yeah. Some we'll have to get together and share stories at some point. But at the end of the day, what I love about this is that it takes people safely and easily out of their comfort zone. I went to the Amazon once. I, I don't know that I would ever go again to the jungle. I didn't know what I was getting myself into, but I'm glad that I went. It was an amazing experience. This way at the IMAX, we get those amazing experiences right up close and personal. And Ariel, for those people who have not seen an IMAX movie, the difference between the normal movies. It's just so much more vast and majestic. Like you have the like crazy sounds and the visuals, like they, it, it's like you're there. It's like you're in the mountains. It's like you're in the valleys and in the ocean. And John, let me end with you. I think COVID taught us a lot of lessons. We have a lot of kids today who are wondering what their world and their future is going to look like. And you're somebody who dreamed it and it came true. What's your best advice to parents of kids who are wanting to dream to make those dreams come true? Well, find something you love to do. I think one of the things that I found growing up is that I met people that encouraged me to do something I might not have been thinking about. I love being outdoors. I, I learned to rock climb. I spent a lot of time, you know, as an, I got kicked out of school as a freshman because I rock climbed all the time, but it got me a job in the mountains uh, working on a survey crew. So I got to see math and practice. So I, I think if a student can find something they love to do and meet people that are doing that, and, and it'll help them go down that path to be motivated to want to learn. You know, you have to learn it. You have to go down. You got to learn math. You want to do science. You have to do it. But to find something that motivates you is the important part. You too. Thank you very much for joining us. This is a movie I can watch again and again and again.